firing line with William F. Buckley, Jr. and Hugh Hefner. Tonight, the Playboy Philosophy. Uh, Hugh Hefner is widely known as the founder, editor, and publisher of Playboy magazine uh, and the entrepreneur of related enterprises, among them the Playboy clubs, which are designed simultaneously to stimulate all the senses. Uh, Mr. Hefner's <coughs> magazine is most widely known for its total exposure of the human female, though of course other things happen in its pages. But Mr. Hefner insists <coughs> that it is a great deal more. There is such a thing as a playboy philosophy of which he is the prophet, and that that philosophy is destined to liberate us all from what he variously calls superstition, puri, tyranny, moral absolutism, that kind of thing. Uh, the philosophy made its debut approximately four years ago under the surprise of everyone and the horror of some still continues chapter after chapter, uh, issue after vi uh, issue, about safing to the world the philosophy of Mr. Hugh Hefner. Although Mr. Hefner deals with a number of subjects, once again it is his views on sex that are especially controversial uh, and especially observed. I should like to ask him just to begin with whether he rejects conventional Judeo-Christian codes of sexual behavior. Mr. Hefner? Uh, yes, uh, at the essence of them, I think I do. Uh, uh, the philosophy, really, I think, uh, is an anti-Puritanism, uh, a response, really, to the Puritan part of our, of our culture. So to that extent, uh, sex, I think, <coughs> is part of, uh, of uh, the Judeo-Christian ethic that kind of uh, got lost uh, and is, is the part that uh, is restrictive and, and uh, not truly, uh, I think, naturalistic. Well, the, the Judeo-Christian code obviously, uh, uh, as we know, uh, antedated Puritanism, didn't it? Yes, it covers so, uh, a lot of ground. I'm not talking about whether or not you reject uh, Cotton Mather's uh, accretions uh, on uh, the Mosaic law, but whether you uh, reject the Mosaic law do you, do you reject, for instance, uh, monogamy? Do you reject uh, the notion of sexual continence before marriage? Uh, uh, yourself, that is to say, you as a, a philosopher of the new ideal of sexual liberation. Well, I think what it really comes down to is an attempt to establish a, uh, you know, what's been called a new morality, and I really think that's what the American, you know, this, this, this thing called the American sexual revolution is really all about. Uh, it's an attempt to replace uh, the old legalism. It's certainly not uh, a rejection of, <coughs> uh, of monogamy as such, but very much an attempt, uh, in the case of premarital sex, uh, there really hasn't been any moral code in the past except simply a thou shalt not. And, well, that's uh, a code, isn't it? Well, perhaps. I don't think it's a very uh, realistic one. Well, you Gentlemen, may we continue in just a moment after this brief interruption. Well, uh, Mr. Hefner, if, if you do in fact uh, reject what is uh, commonly known as the uh, Christian code or the religious code, uh, why, why, <clears throat> why do you take the position that uh, the Playboy philosophy is really, in a sense, non-controversial, that it is uh, sort of congruent with the new reality? If in fact you have rewritten the ancient theological uh, tablets, uh, oughtn't you to claim uh, some kind of a moral authority to do so, and if so, what is that moral authority? Is it only your own intuition, or, or, or what is it? Well, first of all, I don't think that uh, uh, just related to sex, uh, just that part of the philosophy, this is not really a rejection in any, in any real sense of the total uh, uh, Christian ethic related to sex. Uh, it's an attempt to reevaluate uh, some of the social sexual ills of our time, and uh, I think that what's going on in society at this particular time, uh, this quest for uh, uh, a new morality, is something that we're only, you know, one small voice in. Uh, uh, and <coughs> it's, uh, it's really an attempt to supply uh, a 20th century code, although I dislike the word code because I think the, the old legalism is part of the, the, the problem. I think that hopefully we're going to uh, evolve a, a more, uh, what's been called situation ethics, uh, 
an approach to ethical problems where sex is concerned, not unlike the, the approach that we use where other uh, problems are concerned. In no other area of morality, uh, uh, I don't think, is it, is it as cut and dried that uh, you follow a certain law simply to follow that law, even if it sometimes takes you out the window. Uh, in the case of uh, uh, premarital sex, I think you've got the prime example of this. How so? Well, uh, we've uh, taken the attitude traditionally, and this certainly didn't begin, uh, uh, it's not Christian in the sense that it came from Christ per se, but uh, uh, it's something that grew through the organization and historical, uh, uh, the anti-sexual aspect of the, of the Christian ethic uh, grew through the centuries and, and became a, a especially extreme in the Puritan and Victorian thing that we suffer from here in America. And it's a, a rejection of the, the notion that sex can be, can have any real place, any moral place uh, prior to marriage. <coughs> and I don't think this is really, um, I don't think it's logical. I think we know a great deal more about the psychosexual nature of man now that indicates that it's not logical. I don't think it's uh, truly to the best interest of people, and I don't think it's truly moral, in the sense that we would apply the word moral or ethical in any other area of activity. Well, <clears throat> I know that that is your, your view, but I think what is interesting is your authority for stating it. I, I, I'm not suggesting that you don't have the right to promulgate your own point of view. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm simply suggesting that it is rather unusual to see uh, you, as you describe your philosophy, uh, ex uh, express a, a sense of shock uh, that uh, a moral exegetes during the preceding 2,000 years should have had the, the nerve to uh, disagree with you. Uh, and uh, 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 it is, I, I think, uh, important for the record to establish uh, that you uh, are, are seeking, in effect, to annul the traditional code about what is proper sexual behavior. But let me ask you this. I'm suggesting you, that you, you be examined. <clears throat> suggested that two yeah. or three times or stated to it. Yeah. It's not true that I'm uh, by any sense because the end that I'm seeking is really very similar. Uh, I think that we are more apt to have a truly monogamous society if we do more realistically uh, come to grips with some of these problems. I think that we've avoided the problems with some of these old rules that have simply been there and, uh, and ignored much of the time. Well, but, but do, do you, as, as, uh, as a matter of fact, tend to take uh, the position uh, in which you would not be unique, uh, that any moral laws that don't, in fact, reflect human behavior are them themselves uh, philosophically suspect? That is to say, uh, I know that, for instance, you cite Kinsey with mm -hmm, extraordinary mm -hmm. enthusiasm, mm -hmm. as though he had, in fact, liberated your thinking on the matter. Uh, and you say, well, look, here, here, Kinsey observes uh, that the, the typical <coughs> human male and the typical human, mm. human female are sexually promiscuous, and under the circumstances, we ought to reverse our laws and our public attitudes in order to make permissible and perhaps even uh, admirable that which, in fact, happens. Are you a, a, a positivist in this sense? I think that only becomes part of it. I don't think that it follows per se that simply because a thing is done, even done by a majority of people, that it is necessarily the best and moral thing. But I think that when you are involved with and are concerned with a, a, a natural physical drive and something as basic to the nature of man as sex is, that when you do get scientific evidence, as Kinsey has supplied, that uh, uh, indicates the, the great disparity. <coughs> this to me is the value of, uh, of Kinsey, the, uh, indicated uh, for the first time statistically the great disparity that existed between our professed beliefs and the, uh, the actual actions of society. I don't think it follows, therefore, per se, that what has been uh, uh, revealed as, as what is occurring is necessarily moral, but is one good reason for uh, questioning some of the old morality. I think that well, the reasons the are, are a good deal different, deeper than that. The real reasons are that uh, many of these moral views are not good for people, that, that good, just, <coughs> humane ends do not come from these, uh, these old uh, traditions. And I think, that, I think that premarital sex, since that's what we're talking about here at the moment, premarital sex can be moral or immoral just as marital sex can. Mm -hmm. Well, now, but, but what, what qualifies you to um, advance this, this position? Uh, it is, of course, a position 
uh, which, which happens to be, um, uh, again, highly congruent with a highly saleable philosophy. Uh, your, your magazine has a, a, a lot of readers uh, and is considered sort of uh, uh, exciting uh, in virtue of its sexual uh, iconoclasm. But uh, it, it, it does seem to me that the, the background of people who have uh, taken it on themselves to reverse ancient uh, attitudes about very sacred matters has been one of a, a, a lifetime of, of study uh, and uh, a certain amount of uh, a moral agony given over to these questions. But Playboy all of a sudden simply announces uh, that thanks in part to uh, it, we simply have to uh, repeal these, these, these ancient attitudes. And I have seen uh, in your own Playboy philosophy no other justification for it than that uh, people ought not to be afflicted with a tormented conscience simply because they give way to their sexual, sexual uh, libidos uh, ir ir irrespective of, uh, of the consequences. Now, that, that is really, in effect, your position, i.e., isn't it? No, it, it, it's, it, it's sort of a hedonistic util utilitarianism. Uh, under well, I've John been, Mill. Uh, the, ma the uh, philosophy, this editorial series that we've been involved <coughs> in, uh, has been, if it's been criticized for one single thing, uh, uh, it has been its verbosity, and, and uh, much of that has been due to the fact that uh, we've quoted at great length uh, a great many sources. I think that uh, uh, scientific, uh, uh, religious, uh, uh, you know, practical and, uh, and philosophical related to these <coughs> questions, I, I, it seems to me that what you're really saying is um, what right have I to express what are admittedly only my own particular uh, evaluations of the situation, and it seems to me that that's what um, that's what a free society is all about. No, I, I recognize your right, and I specifically uh, uh, conceded it a moment ago under the Constitution of the United States. Say any anything you want at all. What I'm what I'm here to question is your credentials uh, uh, as a serious uh, moral teacher, uh, and it seems to me though that the uh, the flavor of your protracted sermon uh, mm -hmm. in Playboy uh, is simply to speak uh, about those who disagree with you uh, as old uh, crotchety uh, 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 Puritans uh, who unfortunately don't uh, share your sense of uh, uh, enlightenment. Uh, in connection with what you said, and I think it bears very, very directly on, on your point, you say that the Kinsey report revealed a considerable disparity between what actually goes on and what people suppose goes on. Uh, wh wh why do you say that? That is to say, why, it, to whom do you suppose that this, the Kinsey Report came as a great surprise? Uh, can you imagine, a, uh, for instance, a Catholic uh, confessor who would have been surprised by the Kinsey Report? No, uh, why why, why, did, why did Christ refer to his disposition to forgive a sinner 70 times 7 times unless he uh, anticipated the possibility of 490 sins? I think it came as a great surprise to uh, the general public. <coughs> no, I don't think it came as a surprise to people who are deeply involved in this kind of problem, uh, uh, you know, whether uh, on the religious side or, uh, you know, on the social or uh, psychological side. But for the general public, uh, the revelations in the report, I think, uh, were very much <coughs> a, uh, an eye-opener. But more than that, they brought them out into the public print. And this, again, I think is where Playboy is, uh, uh, and the philosophy are, are really important. It is not uh, I don't think that any particular, although I agree that many aspects of, of the philosophy are in one sense controversial in that these are the things that, uh, these social questions and, uh, are the things that are being debated in society today, the philosophy is not really putting forth a, um, a unique or original point of view. Mm -hmm. The major thing I think that uh, we're in a position to do, and, <coughs> and uh, uh, happily so from, from my uh, own point of view, is to um, permit the exchange of views on these things and uh, to probe into some of the questions that do not find uh, a general um, uh, airing in the, in the popular press. And I think this is one of the problems that we've suffered from in the past related to sex and some other questions too. Well, I, I don't deny that uh, you occasionally ambush a dissenter into writing uh, in your columns so as to be slapped down by your very skillful uh, uh, editors. 
but but there is a Playboy line. Very much so. Very and much that, so. That Playboy line is a line that, for instance, refers to uh, uh, the quote bugaboo of sin, refers to quote uh, sacred cows, and as I understand it, uh, the bugaboo of sin uh, is your reference to those theological sanctions uh, that uh, attempt to restrain certain people from giving way to lustful uh, uh, anxieties on the grounds that to do so uh, is wrong. What I don't understand well, I is what I, what, I, what, 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 I, what I wish you would explain to me is why you simply uh, brush aside the very concept of wrong uh, and right, uh, why you feel that, there is, that, that they are highly irrelevant provided you have as you are so frequently put it, two consenting adults. What I attack is the notion that right and wrong should be related simply to the notion of sin, simply to a notion of thou shalt not, rather than related to the real <coughs> ultimate interests of the human beings involved. That's what the philosophy is all about. But did you, do you suppose that the people who wrote the Bible, some, some people even allege that they were divinely inspired or against the ultimate uh, interests of people? Are you, are you going to die a happier man than St. Francis of Assisi as well, a result you of your pursuit of hedonism? Basic sexual ethic is really based upon the Bible per <coughs> se. It's much more complex than that well, and uh, became you know, much, more, much more restrictive than that. Well, I would find it a much easier geographical act to trace uh, a line between Puritanism and the Bible than between the Playboy philosophy and the Bible. Yes, I think that's right. Uh, uh, although I, I agree with you that there are certain uh, accretions uh, which have never been acknowledged by all theological thinkers, but all theological uh, Christians, uh, theologically trained thinkers, take, take the position that simply because somebody desires to do something doesn't necessarily make it right. But I don't understand you to be taking this position. I've I, think we're overlooking a very, well, I think we're overlooking a very important uh, key in this thing. One of the basic things that we have argued against is the notion that in our particular concept of a free society, with the <coughs> emphasis that is a placed in America on the separation of church and state, that the notion of sin or predicating these social sexual taboos on any kind of religious concept, uh, that this is uh, not a proper approach in a society in which uh, that is supposed to be pluralistic and supposed to be secular. It doesn't mean that each uh, particular religious denomination can't come up with their own particular evaluation of, of sin as they see it, but I don't think that sin should have any particular place in uh, uh, secular society as such because it's a religious concept and should remain there. Gentlemen, we'll pursue this point further after this brief interruption. Uh, it seems to me, Mr. Hafner, that, that your position begs a, a couple of facts of life. I know you're interested in facts of life. Uh, one of them uh, 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 is, that, is that, that man being uh, religiously oriented, uh, a society tends to have certain uh, religious commitments, which be, may be uh, extremely necessary, in fact indispensable, to the ethos of that society, whatever the particular arrangements are as regards the actual division of the authority between church and state, so that uh, I think it is possible to say that there never was a completely atheistic uh, state, uh, at least not one of uh, this, this side of, uh, of tyranny. But the second, even accepting your premise, uh, is, is, is surely this, that in your emphasis on the private moral authority of the individual, you cease to, to take into account, do you not, uh, that man's uh, uh, sexual activity, if it is uh, normal, uh, is, is, is not a, a masturbatory matter, it is something uh, that uh, involves other individuals, mm -hmm. uh, and that in the course of that relationship, uh, all of society has a certain vested interest mm -hmm. in the nature of that relationship, mm -hmm. and that under the circumstances, it is not, as you, as, as you put it uh, somewhere <coughs> here, uh, when you said a man's morality like his religion is a personal affair best left to his own conscience. Mm -hmm. uh, surely it isn't personal if it involves somebody else if it involves children, uh, if it involves his neighbors, uh, if it involves his whole relationship to the community. You've raised two kinds of questions. There are two separate questions. I think that um, obviously you do need in any society, and, and there has always been an underlying ethical or moral uh, set of values that is, is society-wide. But I think <coughs> that uh, it would be dismissing too lightly the thing that uh, is 
distinctly uh, unique to, or was in the beginning, uh, uh, to the American concept of democracy. This, uh, this notion of separating church and state was a rather um, you know, radical kind of concept when it was uh, conceived, and a great many people didn't think it was going to work. As a matter of fact, it was never conceived in America. No, it wasn't conceived there. Nine out of the 13 there, the states uh, had established religions. Yes. So the, 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 the idea of the kind of vision you're talking about was a discovery of Earl Warren of, of about seven or eight years ago. No, the kind of concept I'm talking about is something that you'll find in the Constitution. And it wasn't in the thir first 13 colonies, but it was indeed incorporated into the basic concept of America. And this, uh, this wall of separation that they talk about, uh, uh, you know, not, not excluding uh, religion per se or religious morality is what we're really talking about here, but recognizing that, uh, you know, traditionally, historically, uh, in the old world, this was the key to much of the chaos and the, yeah, and the et cetera. Yeah, let's not talk about the entire building of separation. Uh, okay, say, to a certain extent, I, I, I agree with you. Uh, what I am challenging uh, is a, a notion that religion ought not to inform uh, the values of a citizen. That, right? after all, is a completely different thing than what we're talking about. Uh, uh, well, but not, not different from what Playboy... Uh, Playboy philosophy is engaged in making fun of every religious notion, however it is translated, whether through the laws or, or through the teachings of, uh, of, of our venerable ancestors. If anybody who disagrees with you is, is just plain wrong. He's superstitious. He's pure tyrannical, uh, one of your uh, 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 terms. Uh, and and I, I, I'm asking you whether or not you agree with the proposition <coughs> that whatever the agreements are between church and state, in point of fact, uh, the so-called freedom of the church, uh, as outlined and explained and defended even by people who desire to keep the church and state separate, Father mm -hmm. Murray, for instance, quoted by you frequently as a case in point, that precisely that freedom of the church is to inform the people about the necessity to maintain certain values that lead, that conduce to a viable existence, and that you're engaged in breaking those values, at least as far as that's Needless to say, there. I have no reservation to the free exchange of various points of view relative to this or any other question coming from religious quarters or any other. And the, uh, it would be very easy for uh, uh, the viewers here perhaps to get the mistaken notion also that the basic things that Playboy uh, puts forth are per se on one side of the, of the uh, <coughs> uh, disagreement here and that the religious community is on the other side. This true is not, is not true. This, this thing called a sexual revolution, which is really uh, what we're talking about here, is, is something that is going on in both secular and religious, uh, uh, in the religious community and is something in which uh, a great many uh, more liberal members of the clergy are very deeply involved in and concerned about. I think well, this search for a new ethical, you know, set of moral values based on something other than simply rigid rules set set forth uh, many, many centuries ago is uh, is something from which only good can come. I have no doubt uh, that you are simultaneously in pursuit of good and a high circulation for Playboy magazine, <laughs> and that you consider the two to be common goals. Uh, and I have no doubt either that uh, today, as uh, a thousand years ago, uh, you're going to find uh, divines who are perfectly uh, prepared to uh, agree with you that we ought to have a completely, quote, sex-liberated society. Uh, I myself tend to be uh, a little bit orthodox, at least as regards <coughs> this. I understand the, 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 the Christian tradition to be one that says merely because you have an appetite is not an excuse for uh, giving in to it. And I understand the Playboy philosophy to, saying, to be saying it is uh, to lead to a kind of a neurotic repression to ask somebody to give it. Incidentally, Freud said somebody, that. Yeah. Mm. Freud said that. Well, no, he didn't say quite exactly that. Well, I see, I see, one of the things in, I think is very in important. In the first place, he was a very orthodox monogamist. All right, one of the, well, uh, I think in, that in we're more apt place, to get... What, what Freud said was, understand what it is that you're doing to yourself. We are more apt but, to uh, get... But he was not a latitudinarian as regards personal uh, behavior. We are no. more apt to get true monogamy, happy monogamy, uh, something other than the, than the uh, sequential polygamy that we really have in society today, if, uh, I think <coughs> if we take a more uh, a realistic... If I may uh, say so, how in the hell do you know? How do you know? Well, what all you can you do about? is base upon, uh, it seems to me, uh, uh, the facts that exist as we know them today, which are considerably different than those that existed many centuries ago. We do have <coughs> Freud. We do have some, as in many other areas of, of man's uh, advancement, there have been 
significant technological advances just within the last few years. The pill, uh, the scientific, though not the actual, uh, solution to the problem of venereal disease, <coughs> these two great bugaboos in the past that lent some seeming logic to the simple thou shalt nots, now technologically have been solved. We haven't been able to apply them uh, socially yet, but it seems to me that it does begin to, uh, to permit the opportunity of, of examining sex in, in a new concept that is not totally related to procreation and is not... Uh, but is, 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 isn't this analogous to saying that uh, since the discovery of insurance policies, it's perfectly all right to rob? No, I think uh, it's comparable to saying the, since the, we've... The principal, uh, uh, the principal fact of robbery is the deprivation, which deprivation no longer is meaningful if you have an insurance policy. Do I understand you to say that you're relating sex to robbery? Is that uh, what you're saying? Uh, I, I am suggesting that there is a sanction both against, uh, quote, illicit sex uh, and robbery. Incidentally... Illicit uh, sex, it, after it, all, it, is it, only what we call illicit sex. Correct, I mean, is all yeah, premarital sex yeah. illicit we, sex? We, uh, and, and I suppose the question uh, before the House is whether God also calls it illicit sex, assuming that you acknowledge its existence. But uh, uh, here, here is something that uh, has always uh, rather struck me as paradoxical in your behavior. Uh, uh, here is your magazine, in effect, in effect encouraging uh, pre-sexual, uh, uh, pre-marital licentiousness, and, and as a matter of fact, uh, uh, post-marital licentiousness. Uh, and, uh, 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 but, uh, but you give very, very strict orders to your bunnies in the Playboy clubs mm -hmm. that they must under no circumstances consort sexually with mm -hmm. their patrons. Mm -hmm. Now, uh, why do you do this? Uh, why, might, mightn't this stultify them? Uh, might this uh, inconvenience the patrons? Uh, why, why aren't you being a little bit inconsistent and being no, so, uh, very, very so uh, consistent, I think. rigid? Uh, no, it's kind of Lutheran, a notion. Uh, you see, you suggest that what I really have is a kind of a a view of society in which there are no rules, uh, personal or otherwise. And of course, this is not the kind of thing that I have in mind at all. Any kind of freedom requires greater personal responsibility, but where the clubs are concerned, this is simply a matter of not feeling that uh, it's necessary to mix uh, sex and the commercial. Oh, why not? In other words, uh, the clubs are there for a specific purpose, what? and that's the specific purpose. Oh, ass assuming it were legal to do so, would you set up a series of brothels around the country? No. Why not? <laughs> Because I think that... Uh, uh, in what way would this be inconsistent with the Playboy philosophy? It wouldn't be inconsistent. It's just mm. not my cup of tea. Why? <laughs> it's not profitable enough? No, I just am motivated by other things, that's all. No, but I, I really am interested in this because uh, uh, I take seriously and I, in my, uh, the attempt to understand the Playboy philosophy, and I, I don't understand why, on the one hand, you should <coughs> urge uh, this kind of... Uh, 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 latitudinarianism, mm. and on the other hand, in certain other aspects of your commercial life, uh, be rather uh, a martinet on the subject. Uh, I don't understand why you give one series of instructions to your readers and another to your bunnies in New York City and Chicago. Well, we don't give any instructions to the bunnies in terms of their personal life. <coughs> That's the point. In other oh. words, this is not their personal life. This is a specific operation set there for a specific purpose. Mm -hmm. And... Uh, has but nothing but to do as with I, whatever, I, no, whatever no, Wait a minute, as personal. I understand it, because I've read your, your code of behavior for the bunnies, and as I understand it, uh, they're not permitted to go home with patrons even after they are off duty, isn't that correct? All of this requires, and, and really the, the motivation behind it, is really uh, a protection for the girls themselves. It, it permits us to... Protection against what? Against uh, using what? My terminology. Against uh, uh, the infinite variety of ways that they would have to find to decline pleasantly if they wanted to decline pleasantly. <coughs> That's the point. In other words, it, uh, it simply separates the one from the other. And I problem. see no inconsistency of any kind. To me, uh, it, it, to be consistent the other way, uh, it would mean that, uh, uh, an analogy that I've used before, uh, that uh, Ziegfeld, because he put beautiful girls on a stage that were uh, inviting and delightful as a part of his show, would be obliged to supply them with the orange drink during the intermission. I think that the two are, uh, you know, the one does not follow logically from the other. Gentlemen, yeah. may we continue in just a moment? We would like to interrupt briefly. Uh, Mr. Hafner, it seems to me uh, that precisely what, quote, follows uh, is, is directly in point. Uh, th that is to say, uh, if a careful reader of the Playboy philosophy em emerges, uh, as, for instance, I myself did on, uh, on reading it, with the notion uh, that there uh, ought not to be any restraints uh, on, uh, on uh, one's, quote, normal uh, appetites. Uh, then, then, then precisely what follows uh, 
uh, ears, uh, at, at, at what point does it all of a sudden become pertinent uh, to suggest certain restraints? Uh, and it seems to me that you run into this difficulty with this paradoxical advice, as I said a moment ago, that you give on the one hand to your readers and on the other hand to, to your bunnies, uh, who are in a position to gratify those, uh, uh, those restraints. Now, we see as recently as uh, a couple of weeks uh, ago uh, uh, a position that might be uh, uh, a, a part of your hundredth installment of your Playboy philosophy. Here's an ad in the most distinguished literary uh, weekly, uh, or rather fortnightly, published in New York City for a book called A, a Bill of Rights for Erotic Liberation of the Sexually Different. Mm. Uh, and their point really being, I suppose, that there's no reason at all for you arbitrarily to decide what's normal and what's abnormal. In point mm -hmm. of fact, mm -hmm. you have gone rather far yourself in suggesting that that which uh, uh, has uh, from time to time been considered abnormal in, in sexual life is really ought to be so, it should be uh, completely normal. So this Swedish doctor publishes a book uh, in which he suggests that uh, uh, convenient provisions ought to be made for the sexually, in quotes, different. Mm -hmm. uh, even, quotes, the necrophiles who require a corpse as the object of their passion. Mm -hmm. uh, the idea being that presumably it's a social responsibility to, uh, uh, to accommodate uh, 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 their tastes. Now, uh, who says A, as somebody says, must say B? And what I don't find anywhere in your sexual uh, philosophy uh, is the point at which you say, look, even though this is what you would like to do, don't. Uh, and the reason you oughtn't uh, is 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 uh, uh, something that doesn't attach merely or doesn't consult merely your personal pleasures of the moment, uh, but certain uh, strategic ethical notions. Where is this in the Playboy, Playboy philosophy? Why well, doesn't uh, B follow from A? Well, I think that uh, B does follow A, uh, but it follows. I think it seems to me in this way. One, we've emphasized very much relative to sex and everything else uh, in the philosophy that uh, man is and should be responsible for his actions. The freedom is not something that uh, uh, removes restraints per se, but the, the, ver you know, the very implications of a free society, uh, and this is so obvious to us in every other way, it's just that sex has gotten lost in it, does require personal responsibilities and does, uh, man is and should be accountable for his acts. Now, where sexual deviation is concerned, I think that uh, a very important, valid point can be made. Sexual deviation, as such, is perpetuated by the kind of suppressive attitude on sex that we've traditionally had in society. One of the things that we're strongly opposed to. <coughs> Dr. Gebhardt recently at the, the Sex Institute at Indiana University uh, was asked uh, uh, whether he felt that there would ever be a, a significant uh, decline in homosexuality in America. And he said, not until we're willing to put far more emphasis on the heterosexual than we are today. Uh, society itself and the kind of conditions that it places around sex very much determines the direction that the normal or that the, that the innate sex drive is going to take in people. And you can either have a, a uh, a society that emphasizes, uh, that has a more permissive uh, emphasis on the heterosexual and the healthy, or you can have one that is essentially uh, restrictive, essentially suppressive, and, and uh, uh, leads to repression and results in uh, a maximum amount of uh, mm. perversion, a maximum amount of frigidity and impotence and all the other problems that go with it. Well, no, I, I know that you have acknowledged, to go back to the first point you made, uh, the, quote, responsibilities, and people must take responsibility for their action. What I've never seen you do is enumerate those responsibilities. God knows one, it hasn't been because of a lack of space. No, but one of uh, the major <laughs> reasons for it, I think... Uh, uh, what are the responsibilities? Suppose, suppose the woman uh, uh, feels that her life has been shattered uh, as a result of the man's decision that he's had enough of her and wants to go on to the next uh, 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 interest. Mm -hmm. uh, to, 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 to what, what are those responsibilities you talk about so often but don't enumerate? Uh, the responsibility always to uh, take precautions against the birth of a child, uh, always to take precautions against yes, venereal uh, uh, disease. What are, what are the responsibilities to people, to, to women? You know you've been accused by, for instance, Professor DeMott of, re of reducing, quotes, the whole man to his private parts. Yes. Uh, and accused by uh, Professor Harvey Cox of really being anti-sexual in the sense that mm -hmm. a woman is simply an accessory. And my reaction to, to that man. is... Your, yeah, your, your, your reaction's been... Uh, I don't get to express my re sure, reaction. Sure, go ahead. <laughs>
My reaction is, of course, that uh, uh, female emancipation is very much related to sexual emancipation, mm. that the two cannot be separated from one another, and that it is our traditional attitude on sex that has placed woman very much in this second-class, non-human role in which chastity has been more important than human welfare. So it is only out of this... Uh, but surely the question is whether chastity is related to human welfare, isn't it? Uh, for instance, your notions of privacy. You rush off to say, well, look, uh, after all, God invented the human body, and under the circumstances, you find it uh, grotesque to assume that total exposure is obscene. But wh what role does, does, does privacy play in your life? Uh, is it or is it not true that your photographers ran pictures of Jane Fonda naked without her, her permission to do so? Or do you simply yes, consider that her permission uh, was absolutely irrelevant, since after all, God made her uh, no, the whole of her, no. and therefore she belongs to your readers? No, quite the contrary. If, uh, if we'd known all the circumstances uh, involved in the... Uh, first of all, uh, Playboy very much is involved in where nudity is concerned. Uh, uh, you know, a professional uh, agreement between model and magazine, and uh, uh, this was... the, the We're not... Uh, uh, a confidential of the uh, of the uh, photographic world. In other words, we don't uh, go into people's private homes, etc. In the Fonda case, uh, this was something where she was involved in something that was directly related to her career. But indeed, in addition to that, if I had known all of the facts as they you know, later came out, uh, we would not have printed the pictures. Well, do you have a contempt for Jane Fonda? A uh, because for her? of her refusal to exhibit her, her body on your not pages? At all. Is, is she a victim of one of these bugaboos, one of these old. Uh, the uh, implication conditions? that, uh, in other words, it'll be a very sad thing indeed if what we get out of this transitional period, because we are going through a period of moral transition related to sex, and we will not be going the... back to we will not be going back to the old concepts. Now, if all we wind up with out of this is a new legalism, in which thou shalt or thou must replaces thou shalt not, I agree with you, we'll be no better off. The attempt in, in uh, uh, establishing something uh, that will be more related truly to what I consider to be really ethical or really moral will be a situation in which people are able to make these decisions situationally <coughs> related to the real circumstances and related to people's real interests. Don't you miss this point? that individuals have got to make these decisions with reference to certain norms, and you're there trying to subvert those norms, i.e., no, you are I'm taking the position clarifying. that those people who disagree with you are irrational, old-fashioned, atavistic, uh, while simultaneously you say, uh, well, under the uh, inner free society, they ought to be privileged, in effect, you say this in parentheses, to act like queers, to act like uh, old-fashioned... Uh, I forget some of those colorful phrases that you use to, to describe your adversaries. Well, I don't but, think but all my adversaries you, aren't, aren't are irrational you? by any means. Yeah. Well, uh, if, Particularly if, if they start from a premise that is mm -hmm. basically religious. Right. Therefore, if they, if they are not uh, uh, irrational, uh, ought you to concede that there e exists uh, a rational defense of uh, certain theories having to do with social behavior, which, however, you keep dismissing uh, no, not secular. These not secular. Not secular. The sacred cows, uh, the bugaboos, the old-fashioned concepts of sin, and so on and so forth. Because again, we're talking about him placing on secular society what is essentially a religious moral ethic, and that I very much oppose. I'm not opposed to the moral, to the religious moral ethic, but I'm very much opposed to applying you it to that part of society. Must be opposed to it. That, uh, no, I'm opposed only to, uh, to applying have, it to the part of society that may happen to have different uh, views. We have only a, a, a couple of seconds, but I, I do beg you to acknowledge this distinction. That number one, you th you concede everyone's right to his religion. Uh, this, That's is, right. this I take for granted. That's right. But and you, are act, you are actively engaged in trying to persuade people <laughs> to uh, stop that applying their, that, their that moral their, that their religion uh, is not equipped uh, to 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 uh, uh, equip them with the effrontery to disagree with you about Not what are the all. proper modes of sexual Not behavior. These particular religious moral views have found their way into our laws, have found our way into yeah. our sexual social code. Yeah, look, it is that that I'm opposed to. You, you write thousands of words every month in your magazine that have nothing to do with the laws in which you give your avuncular advice to Miss Jones and Mr. Smith, who write you about their sexual difficulties, uh, mm -hmm. and the course of meeting out advice. You never once asked them that I have seen to consult their religion or to consult uh, what I might call expert uh, uh, teachers of, uh, of ethics. You simply 
uh, take over. And in doing so, uh, you, are, you are not merely using your own freedom to govern your own personal life, but you are urging uh, it to undermine uh, the precepts which an awful lot of people hold uh, are indispensable to the survival of community life. What we're doing is supplying an alternate point of view to <coughs> the ones that are all too prevalent in Ann Landers and in much of the rest of secular society in those special departments like the advisor and the forum where readers specifically ask us questions. This is very different than indicating that this is the only way. One of the, the real key to the philosophy is not offering an alternate moral code to uh, the traditional one, <coughs> but a suggestion that uh, but there may be some better answers than that yeah. we're apt to find some better answers if we re-examine many of these old traditional ideas. I'm Gentlemen, we'll say, continue in just a moment, if we may. We'd like to interrupt briefly. Gentlemen, we have some questions who have been, which have been submitted by our viewers. We'll direct specific questions to each of you, but if you have a rejoinder or a comment or a rebuttal, please feel free to offer it. Mr. Buckley, we'll direct the first question to you. What is your first reaction to Mr. Hefner's comment that the only solution to the nuclear problem, and we quote, is to turn over all our nuclear weapons to the UN, close quote? Hmm. Well, I think it's a, uh, it's a uh, program for a uh, disaster, uh, and I think that uh, I, I wasn't aware that Mr. Hefner had made that particular statement. I didn't. But maybe he would want to modify it if he did. Uh. Yes, yes. Uh, the quote, uh, uh, that uh, particular quote uh, came from, I think, the piece that was done on me uh, by the Saturday Evening Post. And what I did say, however, was, was not unrelated to that. It was not the UN, uh, per se. But what I, I said was that the only eventual possible uh, solution to the problem of uh, nuclear armament, it seemed to me clearly, was in some kind of Government, world governmental control of same. Uh, now, obviously, simply turning over them over to the UN at this particular point would be impractical because the safeguards aren't there. But that there is no possible solution in the two alternatives that are offered most often in the popular press today, neither disarmament nor a number of different countries and increasingly a, a greater number arming for the war that uh, everyone is aware can't be fought uh, is any solution. And that if we are ever going to reach a point this is one far more dramatic example than, uh, than sex, where technology has outrun the, the social uh, problems. Uh, we've got to find a way in which we can uh, live together uh, in a world other than by war <coughs> and by force. In the light of the explanation, Mr. Buckley, do you have any comment? No, sir. We'll direct a question to you, Mr. Hefner. Wouldn't you agree that there is a direct relationship between the decline of absolute moral standards and the consequent rise of crime and depravity, et cetera? No, not at all. I think that uh, sex crimes uh, uh, come from, from just the opposite. I think there are more acts of, we're very aware right now of, uh, in this last year or so, a number of acts of violence which at their heart are basically sexual. But this kind of thing comes not from uh, uh, a more, what I would call a more realistic uh, uh, evaluation of uh, or, or sexual morality, but uh, from basically suppressive attitudes. It's, it's out of sex suppression that this kind of uh, violence comes. I'm assuming, Mr. Buckley, you would care to comment. Yes, uh, I, I, I know, and everybody knows, that it is extremely hard for criminologists to uh, uh, come up with any conclusive tables on the relationship between uh, violence uh, passively enjoyed and violence explicitly uh, <coughs> committed. Uh, however, uh, I think that uh, it is a matter of common sense, if that word hasn't also been uh, anachronized, uh, to, to recognize that to the extent that a society is deprived of a sense of reality having to do with what is right and what is wrong and what is permissible and what is impermissible, uh, a certain kind, a kind of self-indulgence uh, is, is encouraged. That is to say, if you have a society in which, it's, it, in which it is universally agreed that certain kinds of activity are, are wrong, that in itself acts as a social and psychological deterrent. And there is no question that during the 20th century, the, the roots of knowledge uh, about ethics uh, have been considerably uh, uprooted. And that for that reason, uh, even though such, such tables as I speak of haven't been developed, 
uh, there is no doubt uh, in my mind that there is some relationship between man's exclusive pursuit uh, of his own desires uh, and his willingness to uh, frustrate uh, popular conventions uh, about violence and sex. Mr. Buckley, we'll direct this next question to you, sir. Hasn't the uh, new morality, so-called, already displaced the old morality? Isn't, in effect, uh, Mr. Hefner's new morality now the established morality? Well, it's, uh, uh, it's certainly more uh, established than it was before. Uh, in this respect, uh, I agree uh, with, uh, with Mr. Hefner uh, that uh, uh, it is part of uh, what they call the zeitgeist. Uh, it is part of the uh, general solipsism of our time, part of what Dean Fitch refers to as the odyssey of the self-centered self, i.e., I count and nobody else counts under the circumstances. That which gives me a pleasure uh, is in and of itself a venerable objective. So uh, I do agree that new the new morality is on the march. What I disagree about is that it's welcome. Mr. Hefty, do you choose to reply? Well, I think my feeling is that we are very much involved at this particular point in a, in a period of transition and that uh, the new morality may seem to apply where sex is concerned up to a certain point where because it is far and away from having been firmly established on all levels of society where both social and legal considerations are concerned uh, a young person may suddenly find himself caught up in some of the very real problems uh, related to the traditional morality and because he's come in conflict with them. Well, gentlemen, we have just about run out of time for our questions from our viewers. Thank you very kindly. Well, we have only a few seconds, Mr. Hefner, but I, I, I would like to, to say that I detect a contrast between uh, your, your tone in explaining the Playboy philosophy here today uh, and your tone of the magazine. Here, it seems to me you're uh, advancing it as an alternative view of human experience. Whereas in magazine, in your magazine, I understand you to advancing it as, as the only modern, uh, intellectually responsible way of looking at things. No, not at all. Uh, in other words, uh, the philosophy really uh, is just our own particular, uh, mine essentially, and the magazine's uh, evaluation of the social sexual ills and um, an attempt to re-examine and suggesting some alternatives. Well, thank you very much. Very nice to see you, and thank you for coming. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs>